<clears throat> Welcome back, Grand America Outlawed. Guys, December 5th, talk coming at you this week is Psychedelic Zelensky, New Zealand data breach, and Montreal mayor collapse. Another Canadian government collapse? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. This one, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, this is going to be a great episode. I mean, oh, my God. Like, there's still lots going on. You know, last week, I mean, it's only been six days since our last one, I guess, because last time it was on Wednesday. And I was like, are we going to have enough stuff to talk about? And then today when I'm going through all my stuff, it's, oh, my God, yeah. The government is still taking hits. And that's actually waking people up more than anything else right now is how bad the government in Canada is. You know, meanwhile, there's talk of carbon passports and climate taxes, the elites talking about our future. Um I've got a TikTok message from the Galactic Federation. We've got uh, the purpose, there's purposely trained people to exterminate those who are suicidal in Canada. The red dress alert system. I don't know if you've heard about that. Wait, um, exterminate? Oh yeah, dude, that, that's it's that's unbelievable. The two people there's died. Canadian in the, extermination squads. Yeah, yeah, basically, two people died in the waiting rooms at Montreal hospitals. I mean. There was one guy waiting like 48, I guess two people, 20 patients had waited, had been waiting more than 20, 48 hours. Apparently. I mean, dude, it's just crazy right now. Everything and everything. So what do you got? What do and I that's, got? That's well, just, that's just about, let's, start let's start with this. Let's start this. I mean, you should be, uh, especially, um, excited for this. I don't know if you know. I mean, I don't think you're really a pro a prohibitionist. You're just a, what's the word? I don't know. You just don't drink. You're no no nonsense. No There's nonsense. a name for it. There's a name for yeah, it. There is. I can't I'm think not, of what yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's kind of sort of kind of sort of along the prohibition lines, but not that. It's like the personal prohibition. Right. Right. But, abstinence, uh, today, abstinence. 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 Today marks the uh, the 90 year anniversary of the end of prohibition. Wow. Yeah, so I thought it might be uh, fun to do a little rundown on the history of prohibition. Okay. Do you want me to start with the intergalactic message first? Oh, the what? The uh, the Galactic um, Federation TikTok message. How about who's that? We'll kick it off the with the Galactic that. Federation. And then you can, well, you know, the Galactic Federation, dude. The, all the, like, like Star Trek? Yeah. This ET, all the, the whole ETs, the people like, wars, you know, they, there's like probably religions about the Galactic Federation. There's a bunch of people that we go, when we do C5s, we kind of go up to visit the Galactic Federation and bring them back down, call them back down, that kind of stuff. Like the one from Star Trek, or is it a different yeah, one? It's is the it? real one. The real okay. one. Yeah. Do they have like an office like in Men in Black? Yeah, that's the whole point. Exactly. You ready for this? You don't you just assume that's that's that to be true. <laughs> you ready for this? I don't know that I am. Well, I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff. So I mean, I she's she's waving her arms around. So this is from John Greenwald. It's in, in X. He says, Why even the even like that. Why are you calling it X? You're not a boomer, or you're not a millennial. You sound like a what's it? It's been X. You're not going to bug me about this every time, are you? I'm yeah, just I am. with the X, like, dude, you're the oldest guy in the room. You should be the last guy calling it X. It's I like, just got on the thing like, in the summer it when it was X. Like, it's like you know when some old dude like tries to wear the latest fucking fashion, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's you calling Twitter X." All right, just say. Nope. Don't even talk to me about wearing fashion because eventually I'm going to have to go out in public and I don't have anything to wear. I don't, I don't even know where my real clothes are. So, anyway, you haven't gone out in public recently? Well, you know what I mean. I mean, like, real public, not just the, the real public. I mean. like, you know, like, I'll talk to you about it later one day. <laughs> <laughs> even this is John Greenwald. Even the aliens are ticked off about the whole congressional UAP legislation thing. Still checking if Galactic Federation TikTok messages on my UFO bingo card for December. So this chick know, looks autistic as fuck. No, she's got the message. She's doing all these like precise hand signals. Can you Dude, hear it? No, nah, I can't hear shit. This what? chick is fucking nuts. I can't hear it. 
Are you are you serious? Why why can't the why isn't the audio working? What what's going I don't on? Know. Last time, did you fix it, or did I have to play your clips for you? Oh come on! What it what is it though? Um, <clears throat> help me out. We should have done a test. Um, I need to hear this. Did you do to share audio as well? Share screen. I'm I'm sharing a whole. Uh, is it because I'm sharing the whole, the whole thing? Let's see here. Window also share audio is on. Also share tab audio is on. Huh. Uh, you're not, you're not up. hearing it right now? No, it, now it's not even on the screen anymore. Are you hearing it now? It's not on, you're not sharing. No, no, but are you hearing it? No. Oh, dude, I can't believe we I gapped out on this. I really, we need to, I've, I've mainly clips today, ironically enough as well. So it has to work. Well, that's fine. Is this your no problem to get it to work? Let me try do, you want me to try, do you want me to try a, uh, a clip? I've kind of, let's look, we said Zelensky uh, psychedelic. So why don't we start with that? Okay, let me try one thing first here. All right. All right. Can you hear this? Yes. Okay. okay is this chick saying? She's not even speaking English, bro. Dude, I'm telling you, it's well, no kidding, she's not. It's a message from the Galactic Federation. They've released an official statement regarding the UAP legislation. They're saying they're saying they've had enough of this. Get the hell on with catastrophic disclosure. Like this is just listen the end of that. They're just saying that. the end of this. Well, Can you read the hand, hand signals? Listen to the end of this. What the fuck? You <laughs> already <listen to> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm speechless. <laughs> this. The Galactic Federation is saying we're ready for catastrophic. Uh, Jerry Jerry Cthulhu in the in the chat says that he's saying it's light language. Exactly, it's from the Galactic Federation. All right, can you translate for us? I just is already translation already on screen that I didn't see. I already told you. It said they're fed up with the the the, the slowdown on disclosure. They want it to happen. So why don't they do it? The pop is a nice touch, though. Yeah, that, that little. That's why I had to play the end. I didn't. I didn't even play the whole thing for you. So, anyway, so go ahead. What? What, what do you got? Why are you bitching on me? Because you just played some Klingon bitch for you. But I'm the day, and then you're like, wait, you gotta wait to the end because what? Because I don't know. I still don't know what you're saying. It's, <laughs> it's the popping. I, I wanted you to hear the popping. It the pop. That's, She's very good speaker of the language. Meant. In whatever language you're saying, that was when her friend pulled out her butt plug. <laughs> All right. So our buddy Zelensky, you know, I kind of miss him. No one wants to talk about him. Well, Vlad and is that Vlad or are they both Vlad? Okay. He's Volodymyr. One's Vladimir and one's Volodymyr, Vlad. yeah. yeah. Who's the Vlad? Who's Vlad? I don't know because he's Vlad. He's Vlad. I guess he's Vlad. Vlad the Impaler, like I hardwired the Starlink. You think it sounds better? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, I got this. I don't know who it is because I can't speak Russian, but uh, this is basically some dude talking about what's going on. This is the like insider reporting, I guess, on what's going on in the Ukraine right now. With uh, maybe maybe some of your tax dollars, I don't know how that works. But tell me if you can hear this. Yep. We spoke last week with our sources, including those in the State Guard Service, the local analog of the Ukrainian FSO. The fact that Zelensky has been guarded for quite some time by MI6 officers who won't let anyone near his body is a personal <laughs> secret. And the fact that he sits on drugs and actually sits on LSD is also not a secret for anyone. But in the last month and a half or two months, he's become very deranged. 
unhinged in one way, he started having memory lapses and concentration lapses. I mean, he may forget certain things. He may not recognize the person he's working with all the time. And it's getting harder and harder to hide. So now here we are. I was sitting yesterday comparing events. We have started this media campaign. Zelensky, Zaluzhny, who is to blame, who is more, who is responsible for the failure and so on. Okay, let's put that aside. Kiev Mayor Klitschko joins in and says that Zelensky is ineffective. Okay, we'll leave that aside as well. Other events. Ukrainian MPs have stopped being allowed to travel abroad, including women MPs. Three female MPs have not been released. Yes, yesterday the news that three female deputies on a business trip abroad were not let out. Politicians are not allowed abroad. The third fact, let's take the fourth. The initiative, for which one people's deputy has already been accused of state treason, suggested that deputies should be mobilized and sent to the front. Fourth. And then there's Zelensky and company, because Ukraine can't handle it. And now let's put everything in its place. It turns out that the media noise is artificially created, where all the dogs are pinned on Zelensky. They say that he is a scapegoat. Deputies and politicians are not let out of the country. They are not allowed to leave. They do not give any thoughts. The impression is that public opinion is being prepared for some kind of reset of the war. Wow. So, I mean, what, you don't think he's done a good job? He's raised hundreds of billions of dollars. I mean, who else could have fucking performed that? That's what I was thinking, man. I mean, fuck me. He even, they gave him an Oscar. I mean, how many people get an Oscar from Sean Penn? That's like a big deal. Can you imagine? That's like, got to be every little, little you think actor that's a, boy's dream, you know? You think Just that's a little good dude. Man, Did you know any little dudes who wanted to be actors when you were a kid? <sighs> I don't know not that I remember. Yeah, I mean, thing, you know. Nah. So, do you think it's is was that a hit job kind of, or do you think it's real? Oh yeah. Well, I don't know. Of? You know, Jerry asked if that's Russian or Ukrainian. I can't tell the fucking difference, man. It's like uh, it was. You know what it was? It was the AI. It was an AI voice. It all looks voice the same. Over. Was it? Yeah, it probably was an AI voiceover. Yeah, I do agree with that. So they say Zelensky's doing LSD. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it he's be hard to do it. LSD? What does he mean he's like sitting on it? Four? What does he mean he's sitting on LSD? I couldn't do it. So, I mean, I got this, I got that. So, should we judge? Do you got that? I guess you got your. I mean, are you going to do that every week? No, no, no. They could, look, it's a once in a lifetime. A lifetime? Message. I'll once in a lifetime message from the Intergalactic Federation. The Galactic Federation, not the Intergalactic. Oh, that's a Intergalactic different. is probably a division of the Galactic Federation. Yeah, yeah. Galactic would be a division of the Intergalactic. But... <laughs> yeah, right. Do you have the good news of the week or no? No, good news this no. Week? no, I've got, I've got. I mean, bad news. I mean, Montreal mayor uh, collapses during the press conference. Did you? See? I don't know if you saw that or not. Oh shit! You mean literally collapsed? I oh, mean, yeah. I thought yeah. uh, I thought you meant like the government was collapsed and kind of like my government did before I left. I mean, I don't have a government now. I guess I do. Who no, this is, I guess this, I have an MP. Or a, this is from uh, CTV. Uh, this is from CTV. Montreal Mayor Valerie Plante. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Is doing uh, well, probably. But we'll reduce the pace of our activities over the next few days after collapsing during a press conference at City Hall on Tuesday morning. So literally, that was this morning, I believe. She was answering a question about homelessness in the city when she suddenly stopped talking for several seconds before sinking to the floor. She was conscious when she was dropped down, <clears throat> when she dropped down. So, you know, they they stopped the, the cameras and stuff. And uh, later in the day, Kadot, I don't know, Kadot, Kadot, the mayor's press attache says she was examined by the paramedics and she's feeling better. So what do you think was the cause of this? Uh, MRA. Not, sorry, sorry, not oh. I shouldn't ask that question. What do you think it was? Not what the cause was, just what happened to her, what they, what they say, what they're saying it was. What are they saying? Fatigue. Yeah. yeah. The mayor of Montreal suffered a malaise during What's a press conference. Ooh. That sounds sexy. <laughs> Fortunately, is out of danger. She will receive all the medical attention she requires and thanks you for your support. What's the malaise mean? 
I don't know. I mean, do you want to check with Jeeves and see? Who's Jeeves? Okay, I'll check with my Jeeves. Oh, you mean like my AI? Yeah. yeah. You called him Jeeves the other week. Yeah, he's pissing me off. Oh, mine's gone. Mine's, mine's oops, it won't, la- it won't allow. It's not allowing me in. Malaise? How do you spell malaise? M-A-L. A-I-S-E. A-I-S-E. Malaise, a general feeling of discomfort, illness, or uneasiness. Whose exact cause is difficult to identify. <laughs> air of malaise. Oh, that's the perfect description. Yeah. <clears throat> fits. Fits the uh fits the bill. Yeah. There was a uh, there was a small video that, that was going around with her actually doing it, but I can't I can't find it. But <clears throat> you know, the other the other interesting part is um Montreal, the same time this came this story came out, two people died in two days waiting in emergency room in Montreal. Did you hear about that? I didn't hear about the Montreal, but I know there's been some BC stuff. I got some BC stuff, but it's yeah. probably more of the pla I mean, maybe it doesn't have to be plus extension. I've got a second hand story to tell you. A second hand yeah. story? Like yeah. My buddy's buddies, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Or just your buddy's buddy. Buddy's buddy. Just that, like, not first time, but second half. So it says, uh, it says, uh, two people died in two days waiting in an emergency room in Montreal. I mean, that could be the, the hospital I was born in. I was born in Montreal General. One man was waiting 12 hours for a stomach ache when he had a cardiac arrest and died. His wait time would have been 24 hours. 20 patients have been waiting for more than 48 hours. I clicked on that to try and get the, but it's just all, it's all in French. So. Can you imagine going to the doctor for two days? Dude, yeah. if I went to Montreal for my finger, I'd be there for two days. Yeah. Just a backwards, yeah. forward, backwards finger. I mean, and, and the, and the, the comments, I mean, this is an ex post and the comments are crazy. There's lots of money for Ukraine though. And EV factories. My mother sat in the hallway for 12 hours in an ER in Niagara Falls, having suffered a mini stroke. Get used to this. It won't get better with mm-hmm. massive immigration happening. <clears throat> I read most of the comments and it makes me so sad. Whatever happened to our beautiful country? Why must we suffer so much? I mean, this is waking people up more than anything. The political destruct, like disaster right now, all for everything, the hospitals. like So, so the secondhand thing I have, um, Somebody had chest chest pains and uh, they called an ambulance. And basically, it took two hours to get there. And then Ooh, she really? went to the hospital. And it was it was a, a bit of a wait. And they're saying now that you should just call Ubers or your friends. Like, don't call the ambulance. Two hours for an ambulance. This is in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't call the. Just say they, the hospital's telling you to call an Uber. Get an Uber. Mm-hmm. Don't call the ambulance. It's quicker. So what? The Uber drivers. They're supposed to pick people up with chest pains now. I ah, wonder if they have CPR. And they just did all these tests and they can't, nothing, they can't find anything. Vaccinated? Oh, yeah. Oh, all yeah. in. All in. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do uh, a quick rundown on this. Get it out of the way. Uh, prohibition is the anniversary, the end of prohibition. December 5th, 1933. Of course, we're recording this on, uh, what was it? Control Plus. I think Control. I live near near the city where there was tunnels going to the States or something, wasn't there? Right now? That would be a pretty big tunnel. Pretty long tunnel. No, no, no. From, uh, from uh, or was there was tunnels Moose under Jaw, now? Moose like by Moose Jaw, Moose Jaw I think, Moose wasn't Jaw, it? Yeah. Yeah. Moose Jaw. So it's Moose Jaw. Uh, so the great social experiment, a brief guide to bro prohibition, not prohibition. That's a different thing. I mean, prohibition is that like an anti-gay thing or just not hanging out with your buddies? I don't know. Uh, described by American president Herbert Hoover as a great social and economic experiment, prohibition, a ban which prevented alcohol from being made, transported or sold was established across the United States in January 1920 and remained in force for 13 years. I wonder how long <clears throat> the uh, marijuana prohibition lasted. Yeah. 
How successful was prohibition in its aim, and who were the gangsters who profited from the bootleg businesses during the prohibition era? So what was prohibition? Prohibition was the attempt to outlaw the production and consumption of alcohol in the United States. The call for prohibition began primarily as a religious movement in the early 19th century. Uh, the state of law passed the first. State of Maine passed the per, first prohibition law in 19, uh, 1846. Man, can you imagine that? Can't drink booze. I mean, the church had a lot of power back then. I mean, we still can't. White dudes can't hunt big game on Sundays in the prairie in the prairie units because of the church. Wow. So yeah, uh, the Eighteenth Amendment to the Constitution prohibiting the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcohol was adopted by both houses of Congress in December nineteen seventeen, and ratified by the necessary two thirds of the states on January sixteenth, nineteen nineteen. Uh, prohibition began on so the 7th of January, 1920. How long did they say it lasted for then? 13 years. That's it. Eh? Wow. That must've been a crazy 13 years then. Like I, I always thought it was longer than that, you know, like that it went on for decades, but it's weird that like 13 years ago was only like, we almost started the show 13 years ago. You know, that's all. Yeah. There's been like, uh, I mean, we've been under, like a prohibition on like freedom or shit for, or I've been on a prohibition from being able to get an organ transplant for three years. Do you think, do you think the, uh, you think the problem with alcoholism is worse now that it's allowed everywhere? You think it should be pro prohibited? Me? Yeah. No, I don't think so. What? You don't think it's worse right now? I mean, isn't alcohol a huge problem in society right now? Probably. Maybe, but I mean, a bunch of shit's a huge problem in society. I mean, and that's just my decision. You know, the dudes who are drinking, they might not think it's a huge problem. So who am I to say? I mean, there's a bunch of people who think all sorts of the shit I'm up to is a problem for society, and I don't want them being able to... to well, but now a little booze ain't okay. So, I mean, we just shouldn't, like... I don't know, we're just... we. We're doing something different these days. We're like glamorizing it, or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, doctors were allowed to prescribe alcohol for medicinal purposes and to purchase it themselves for laboratory use. Wow, that's right. You could have a little doctor speakeasy. Crime offered gangsters quick. Roads to success, wealth, and status, and prohibition presented them prohibition presented them <laughs> with a golden opportunity. Rather than being a fairly small scale localized affair, crime became increasingly national and organized. I mean, they almost use that to start. I bet you they, that that was the CIA selling all that booze or whatever the whatever the came before it. You know? Yeah. Al Capone. Did Al, so Al Capone was coming to Canada. Was he, was he in? Uh, did Al Capone go to Moose Jaw? I think so. Yeah. I mean, wasn't that what, why the place was so famous because of those gangsters? Could be. Could be. I don't know for sure though. So uh, then the gangsters took over the place, started the organized crime. What were the overall effects of prohibition, and why did it fail? During prohibition, the com consumption of hard liquor probably dropped by as much as fifty percent and other alcoholic beverages by about one-third. As a result, it did have some positive effects. Here you go, Graham. The number of deaths due to cirrhosis of the liver fell considerably, but was offset due to some extent by deaths called, caused by unadulterated alcohol. And probably a bunch of people going blind, too, from drinking shitty shine. <laughs> However, in 1929, Mabel Walker Wilbrandt, the former assistant U.S. Attorney General who had headed prohibition prosecution, conceded that alcohol could be purchased at almost any hour of the day or night, either in rural districts, the smaller towns, or the cities. At the same time, prohibition almost completely destroyed the brewing industry, causing a huge loss in jobs. It also resulted in a loss of $11 billion in tax revenues and cost $300 million to enforce. Wow. 
passed in February 1933 and ratified on the 5th of December 1933. The 21st Amendment repealed the 18th Amendment and so handed prohibition in the United States. Control of alcohol after 1933 became a state rather than federal issue. A small number of states remained dry for some years. Mississippi was the last until 1966. But oh, so, you're talking, areas. so when you're talking about prohibition from the beginning of this segment you're doing here, is it's been the states, not Canada? Yeah, I don't think Canada's ever had a... Uh, so that's why there was the connection with Saskatchewan then. Yeah, if it was a Canadian one, it definitely would have made that connection, you know, for sure. I got an, I just I pulled, think he was. I just pulled up an article here about uh about it um Capone. Sure I, about Capone, yeah. <clears throat> Al Capone's family searches for uh for truth behind Moose Jaw connection. So this city is only like Moose Jaw is like an hour away, 45 minutes south of me, I guess. Al Capone famously remarked, get this, I don't even know what street Canada is on. <laughs> but his grandniece, De Deirdre, doesn't think that's true. So Deirdre is like a, a gangsterologist, I guess. Um, a gangsterologist? Yeah. She has extra it's motivation not. to get the facts straight. Her grandfather was Ralph Capone, once named public enemy number three by the Chicago Crime Commission. Bruce's brother and partner, Al, was public enemy, enemy number one. So I guess she, she's saying um, she's trying to figure out if the truth is out there. All they want is to get the truth out there. Deirdre will be in Saskatchewan until August. So I guess she was looking about 10 years ago, looking at uh, evidence in Saskatchewan for, for Al's. People, yeah. say, people say people loved him. He had kind of a Robin Hood image. He provided his customers with top quality alcohol. He ran a really good business. I mean, have it. He's a good bartender. I mean, the good ones always are. So, uh, while we start slipping towards that uh, that that bad half, how about this? Have you heard about this one? Yeah, let's see if uh, have you heard about this or not. Maybe we could do this and this. <laughs> The state of New York, and particularly the governor of New York, has just gotten one step closer to attaining the ultimate pandemic power. Being able to designate certain classes of individuals as a health threat, forcibly relocating those individuals to specially designated housing facilities, and keeping them there for as long as the government wants. And also, they'd have the power to control what these people can and cannot do. However, if these new government powers sound like the very definition of a quarantine camp, well, according to this AP fact check right here, you would be wrong. Although their reasoning is perhaps even more ridiculous than you can probably imagine. And so let's go through it all together. To start with, back in December of 2021, at the height of the COVID pandemic, you had a bill that was working its way through the New York State Legislature. This bill would allow the government to take people that they deem to be threats to the general public health and put those people into essentially indefinite detention. This bill, just for your reference, was called Assembly Bill 416. And when I personally read this bill back in December, it was frankly the most aggressive piece of legislation I've come across in the past decade. Let's go through the bill together and you can tell me what you think of it. You can leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. Here's how the bill reads, quote, upon determining by clear and convincing evidence that the health of others is or may be endangered by a case, contact or carrier or suspected case, contact mm -hmm. or carrier of a contagious disease, that in the opinion of the governor, after consultation with the health commissioner, may pose an imminent and significant threat to the public health, resulting in severe morbidity or high mortality. Now, just to pause here for a super quick moment, what this bill is laying out here. Can you imagine that? Yeah. The governor can just have you locked up indefinitely. And this was big. Remember when it happened in New York and everybody was like, oh, that, you know, it won't, nothing will come of it or whatever. People are just sort of playing it off. Everyone says we're crazy. Hey, yeah. Scott Mack in the chat is talking about look up the event 201 and go to the very end. And now we have a mysterious lung infection spreading yeah. around the world. Only affected each other. What happened in event 201? Well, they were talking about like their, their big plan thing. Their, one of their tabletop things was, and it's affecting the children, right? The media were out there saying, oh, and it's affecting the children of the world. And now we have the white lung thing that seems to be also <clears throat> an adverse event. Uh, category for you know what 
Jibbity jab. Are you gonna? Are you done with this guy's clip? Uh yes, I'm done with this guy's clip. Can I play the soft coo clip then? Soft coop. Soft coo, yeah. Coop is, who's, who's, who's we cooping? This is uh, this is from Robin Minotti. Um, he says uh, this is a clip of Meryl Nass. I think her name is uh, Meryl Nass. We are undergoing a soft we're coup. undergoing a soft coup, and the idea is to create a whole new set of laws and ignore the existing human rights laws and other laws. Similar to what happened in New York, right? But at the global level. So this is this is EU. This is she's speaking to the EU Parliament, I guess here. Under the pretext of pandemic preparedness and the biosecurity agenda. The WHO is developing through all its nations, but with the WHO directorate in the United States in charge, a pandemic treaty and amendments to the existing international health regulations that will remove the human rights protections currently um, embedded in the IHRs, will enforce surveillance, censorship, get rid of freedom of speech, require governments to censor and only push a single narrative. Also, we will be sub subject, if, if they can make this work, to vaccines developed in 100 days, which the organization CEPI is planning to do. And one of the people who founded CEPI was Jeremy Farrar, who is now the chief scientist at the WHO to bring this forward. Um, other things that, uh, that amendments do is to bind the state so they're no longer recommendations, but enforceable edicts, uh, provide a liability shield, get rid of intellectual property rights, move supplies from one country to another, um, enforce digital passports, and the director general of WHO can demand that a pandemic or a potential pandemic exists. He can just declare it with no standards and then countries around the world will have to obey. Want me to play the rest of it? Uh, yeah, there's only what, like uh, 45. Okay. Uh, also, the WHO will tell you what drugs you can and can't use in your nation once a pandemic is declared. Obviously, the budget will increase. Um, One Health is another part of this. One Health is a concept that was created to enable the WHO with these documents to take over jurisdiction of everything in the world. I think that we've had enough of that. I mean, this is this is what they're trying. I don't think it's going to work, but pretty pretty incredible stuff. I mean, I might as well play this too. This is uh, this is from COP twenty eight. The head COP of the IMF. What's COP stand for again? Uh, climate. Uh, you know what? I don't even know. It's not the party one that Dvorak was talking about on No Agenda. What do you mean the party one? Uh, something of parties or something. Oh, maybe climate, climate, uh, something. Of, yeah, I don't know. Not sure. Do you want to look it up or? Sure. You keep going. I'll play this. This is about this will increase all consumer pricing and paves the way for, for the conspiracy theory of personal carbon allowances. So again, the IMF backing calls for carbon consumption charges. Only the rich will retain their lifestyles. I mean, this is what they're trying to do. We are a huge proponent of carbon price. We believe that carbon price has the potential of raising revenues uh, in a way that is both equitable because the more you consume, the more you pollute, the more you pay. Mm. And it is also an incentive to accelerate decarbonization. In other words, you would need less money uh, because of uh, consumption and production adapting to it, to it. So, I mean, again, who defines pollution? And now they're just going to want to, you know, charge you for, for carbon mm -hmm. consumption. Conference of the parties. Conference of the parties. Wow. Interesting. That is interesting, isn't it? So here we go. This is the other one I have saved. Ready for this? So 
if you're in Canada and, and you know, you, you're you suffering because we don't pro, a bit, prohibit uh, alcohol anymore and you're just, you've are just you had enough with life, if you're seriously considering suicide. Kill yourself. Don't, don't worry. We have purposely oh, trained. Elimination. We have purposely trained to eliminate. Totally irresponsible. I think it is totally irresponsible for the leader of the opposition to misrepresent what this means. All of the assessors and providers for me are purposely trained to eliminate people that are suicidal. Are purposely trained to eliminate people that are suicidal. And so this is for... And this is from Wiretap Media on X, and it says, the expansion of made for people suffering from really? mental illness is closely aligned with the Nazis' eugenics program, and it becomes hard to believe Carol, Carolyn Bennett wasn't saying the quiet part out loud. Most she was. Yeah. She was. All right, you done? I thought, well, I mean... I'm not surprised, I guess. Well, you've—I mean, you've been—you've been wanting to talk about the maid thing for a while. I mean, well, I kind of, you know, forgot about it. Honestly, it hasn't been in the headlines for a little while. It just seems like that's what they want, you know. Yeah. Is they want me to forget about the maid? Have you heard about the? Um... It's whack, though. I know people who, you know, have family members that. Got made. Pretty soon they'll be giving you a little money. Yeah. We'll bring you like grandma and we'll give you a couple hundred bucks. We'll take you a month of social security. Pay for your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> we should still do the gate, you know, grammaric assistance and dying. You know, we'll take you up in a plane, throw you out. We'll kick you off a mountain. I mean, you can get way more out of that last little bit of life. I mean, you we'll can send you to Valhalla. We'll send you to Valhalla. You know, I mean, what else could we do? We could, we could OD you know. on, like, we could OD on LSD. I mean, go out that way, yeah. like, you know, some some crazy. It's somewhat traumatic for us. You know, people, like <laughs> we get this. I gotta kill three. They want it. They're gonna do it anyways. They're gonna <laughs> do it. The mate. Just don't. What well, the government doesn't have to get in that part of your life. We can do it for you. Keep the government out of your death. Hire grammar. <laughs> Hire grammar. So I got to. uh I got one more got, though. No, no, me first. So before we still got like what eight, ten minutes before we go to the next one, to the to the member section. So let's jump into the. I mean, this one's a good one. I feel like where is it? you're gonna get a crack out of this one. I feel like so it's gonna be. It's gonna remind you of something. I feel like so we got. I gotta quit saying so. So yeah. Peters informed of Hamas, Hamas attack profited millions by short selling Israeli stocks, study suggests. Doesn't wow. Familiar? Two New York law professors no they identified a sharp and unusual spike in short transactions prior to the October 7th attack. <clears throat> the Israeli government is investigating claims by American researchers that some stock traders. <clears throat> may have had prior knowledge of the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel and used that information to earn millions of dollars by short-selling Israeli companies. In a draft paper released on Monday, law professors Robert Jackson Jr. of New York University and Joshua Mitz of Columbia University said they identified a sharp and unusual spike in trading in risky short-dated options on Israeli companies in the days leading up to the deadly Hamas invasion of Israel. Of course, short sellers bet against companies whose shares they expect to fall in price. They pay a fee to borrow shares in those companies and then sell them for the current market price, hoping to make a profit by buying them back for less before the shares have to be returned. Our findings suggest that traders informed about the coming attacks profited from these tragic events, the professors wrote in the paper, titled, entitled, Trading on Terror. Days before the attack, traders appeared to anticipate the events to come. They explained, noting that the short interest in the MSCI Israel Exchange funded fund EIS, which tracks the performance of 
a basket of Israeli security suddenly and significantly spiked on October 2nd, five days before Hamas terrorists attacked Israel and reignited the Middle East war. <clears throat> Isn't that nuts? Does this sound familiar yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. To illustrate how unusual the bet against the Israeli market was, the New York professors pointed to the volume of short transactions in EIS units from 2009 to 2023, during which Israel experienced many crises. From the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis to the 2014 Gaza conflict, to the global COVID-19 pandemic, to the more recent nationwide protests against Prime Minister Netanyahu. Throughout all 3,750 trading days in this 14-year period, the short volume on EAS on October 2nd was in the top 99 percentile, according to the paper. This indicates it indicates that it is extremely unlikely that the volume of the short selling on October 2nd oh. occurred by random chance. Interesting. For the 66-page paper, the professors used data from the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, a Washington-based self-regulation and market surveillance agency. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. In one example documented in the paper, 4.43 million new shares in UMI, the largest bank in Israel, were short-sold between September 14th and October 5th. In the immediate aftermath of the attack, uh, the share price dropped from a high of 857 to 660. So, wow. yeah. Uh, it's getting interesting. It's getting interesting, right? It reminds me of, uh, well, I mean, let's just pop over here quick. This is, it's like a time machine because they stopped talking about this quick, but I was able to dig up from, uh, you know, a few weeks after 9 11, September 19th, 2001. Sources tell CBS News that the afternoon before the attack, alarm bells were sounding over unusual trading in the U.S. stock options market. An extraordinary number of trades were betting that American airline stock price would fall. The trades are called puts, and they involved at least 450,000 shares of American, but what raised the flag is more than 80% of the puts far outnumbered the call options, betting that the stock would rise. Sources tell 60 Minutes. So remember, can you believe that they were even talking about that? U.S. Yeah. investigators want to know whether Osama bin, Laden, Osama bin Laden was the ultimate inside trader. Yeah, see the blame. Right on that. Yeah, he's down in his little cave, like implementing this thing on his satellite laptop and shorting, shorting airlines. Yeah. And shorting airlines. <clears throat> I don't even know how to short an airline. So, I don't know. That's uh, that's. I mm, we could probably do this too. What what happened on my share? Oh, sorry, that was me. Yeah. Did go you ahead. Sorry. I I took over your share by mistake. There you go. I'll add you back to stage there. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to before we cut into the we got just a little bit of time left. So this is this might be a nice little lead in for the uh, what for the what? second half. Yeah. Okay, maybe I should go then first. Let me do mine. Okay. Okay. Have you heard of the red the red alert uh, system? Red alert, red alert, like uh, from a cell phone? Like me, no, the red alert, yeah. This is uh, for indigenous, missing indigenous women. The government's looking at this. I'll play, I'll play the audio from it. Just the is first. that the name of the project, the red alert? Yeah, exactly. I think it is. Let me just confirm here. I can't hear it. It's a mark. Well, MP Mia Gazan is leading the discussions on the proposed red dress alert system and joins us now. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So a red dress alert. Thank you so much for having me. So how would this alert system work? 
Well, again, we're just uh, in the beginning stages of, uh, of consultations. Um, and that's really going to uh, be born out of the discussions we have with folks that are working on the front lines, impacted family members uh, and leadership. Uh, that's the whole purpose of this. Uh, so we'll, we'll see after uh, the consultations are done. Guess who's been missing besides women? Like way know. more, like more than like normal people going missing. Who? Take a guess. You can't, you can't guess. Uh, more than Indian women? Yeah, more than Indian women. I don't know about more than Indian women. More than regular people. White dudes. No, let me let me play it here and see. Okay, and I guess oh, an obvious question, but I have to ask it, and that is, why is this alert needed? Well, we know, uh, and, and including the current Prime Minister, called the crisis of murdered and missing Indigenous women, girls, two-spirit, oh, and diverse gender be. people, an ongoing gender. You just stepped on it. You just stepped Trannies. on it. <laughs> what? what did you say? What? Trannies. <laughs> no, not quite. Since they're done. Okay, and I guess oh, an obvious question, but I have to ask it. And that needed. Well, we know, uh, and, and including the current prime minister, called the crisis of murdered and missing Indigenous women, girls, two spirit, and diverse gender people an ongoing genocide. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. at crisis levels. This has been acknowledged uh, at the UN uh, level. We know that Indigenous women, girls, two spirit, and gender diverse peoples are going missing at disproportionate rates. And we also know through uh, the National Inquiry, specifically called to justice 9.1 to 9.11, that should we go missing, uh, systems that are in place to protect us have not uh, done what needs to be done to make sure that we're safe and make sure that we're found. So what will the cons consultation process look like? What sort of things will the federal government be considering? Well, you know, we started uh, this Friday, actually. Uh, I was up very uh, late on Friday uh, meeting uh, with groups in online uh, preliminary discussions. Uh, that will guide the directions uh, that we will be uh, pursuing going forward. Uh, they were very rich discussions. I certainly uh, found uh, all the contributions extremely helpful. And I think that's important. We want to make sure, uh, certainly I want to make sure as somebody who um, is, uh, you know, helping to lead this initiative that it is done in an appropriate way. It's done in a trauma-informed way, and it's done in a way where the voices that need to be heard are heard. That often hasn't happened. Certainly, we've seen with consecutive liberal and conservative. And, of course, doing it in an inclusive way, right? I mean, what, would you agree that maybe it's okay to include, like, two-spirit and gender-diverse uh, people along with the Indigenous women to get some more attention on the subject. I mean, we've been talking about missing indigenous women here for a long time. Like, and there's, that there's nothing happening. There's a, you know, more than average uh, problem here with missing indigenous women. And we even talked about it on our show a couple of times with people that, you know, talked about the, the Picton ranch and, and that kind of stuff, the sex workers, but also it happens like it seems to be in the middle of nowhere um, up in Northern BC and the Yukon and all that. But maybe they're using these woke terms to bring attention to the matter, and they, they can't ignore it. I mean, they the government can't ignore it if you say they're two spirited or missing, right? How are they? Maybe if, if that's the case, I don't agree with it. <laughs> I mean, isn't it crazy that they threw that in? They have to throw that in there, dude. You wanna? Okay, so this will segue into this nicely before we before I leave, because uh, I mean, you want to talk about some things and listen to this. This is on uh, this is down in the states again, but this is on the trans. This is an inquiry, inquiry on transgender acts. such as teamwork and goal setting. In terms of mental health, studies show that participating in youth sports is associated with lower rates of anxiety and depression, lower amounts of stress, higher self-esteem and confidence. Women must stop. Inclusion cannot be prioritized over safety and fairness. And ranking member Lee, if my testi testimony makes me transphobic then I believe your opening monologue makes you a misogynist. Thank you. 
I now thank you, uh, Ms. Gaines. I now recognize Ms. Perry for her opening statements. Good afternoon, Chairman McLean, Ranking Member Lee, and distinguished members of the subcommittee. My name is Sarah Parshall Perry. I am a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. As a former varsity athlete, the mother of a girls varsity athlete, and former senior counsel for civil rights at the Department of Education, I have, as the saying goes. Uh, Madam Chair, excuse me, I move to have uh, the gentlewoman's words taken down. What just happened there? The committee will suspend. Hang on a sec. What, what did, like, <laughs> wait, wait, can you back it up? What happened, honestly? I just. All I did was put LOL in the chat and, and I missed that whole fucking thing. I, something. A woman's words. Department of Education. I have, as the saying goes. Uh, Madam Chair, excuse me. I move to have uh, the gentlewoman's words taken down. The committee will suspend. What does that mean? What, what? Words taken down. I just thought uh, Jenna like they shut her up. They shut her up though. They wouldn't yeah. let her continue. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, it goes on. They don't really start. They don't really... How it's fair to be called transphobic. There's a thing. Can I just ask? Look at all the how hubbub. How it's fair to be called transphobic. There's a thing. I would say men disguising themselves as women are engaging in personalities. Order. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Order. Order. Let's let's get a ruling. The chair. They gotta like figure out what's okay to say. Is that what they're doing? There's a big commotion here because because she said she's what like a a mom a mom to some women athletes and stuff. Like, what was she about to say? I I'm confused. Okay, I move to withdraw the point of order. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Um, I now recognize Ms. Perry for her opening statement. You can start over. Thank you. Okay, so she got to start over then. So she gets to say it twice. Wow. The gentlewoman's words taken down. I just, like, what's words taken down? The it committee will like, suspend. Like, she can't keep going until they decide that she's what she said is okay to continue or something. Why'd she say gentlewoman? Because they can't say lady anymore. It's gentle. Why can't they just say the ladies? Why can't they just call her lady? Well, like I was going to say, like, gentlemen is not engaging in personalities. What does that mean? Engaging in personalities? No, she said engaging in personality disorders is what she was saying. No, no. She said she's engaging in personalities. The judge said that? No, no, the same black chick who called black, not chick, I guess, like a uh, distinguished black representative of, I don't know which state, but uh, she definitely said, uh, anyway. Okay, we, yeah, I mean. We can... It's kind of beat to death, but gentlewoman, the point is gentlemen is not gendered language. It's ladies and gentlemen. That's why I said lady, yeah. You know. that's, I know that's. That's what I'm getting at. This is going all too far. Anyway. And baby. Yeah, lots of good people in the chats there, too. Anyways, sorry for the audio people. It was just a big kerfuffle in the court or the, 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 the session or the hearing or whatever the fuck they were doing there. Very strange. All right. And I heard so. some lady say, like, I heard somebody they say in the background, if, if there's a man dressing as a woman, then he's he's practicing or he's in personality disorder or something. Really? Yeah. All right. Last one before we cut off and go to the plus section. Already going long. We got, uh, I guess, no agenda would say we're dicks for doing this, but we got to pay okay. the bill. That is okay. It is what it is. Okay. Another pilot incapacitation. Got Dr. Kevin Stillwagon, the first officer who was flying on the the flying pilot on American Airlines Flight 755 from Paris to Philadelphia on November 29th had a seizure that stiffened his legs and back, jamming his feet under the rudder pedals on final approach. 
the captain immediately took over flying duties. There was no loss of aircraft control. The relief pilot who was required to be on the flight deck during the landing was able to remove the unconscious pilot from the seat with the help of the purser. The relief pilot occupied the seat for a normal landing and taxied to the gate. I have a little... Uh... Tower, we got a medical emergency on board. American 755 Heavy, Roger, when you're able, give me the information. This is the audio of the, like, Did back and forth. Yeah. yeah, there's some dead space in it, but I figured we could just <laughs> chirp over it. Yeah, yeah. Turn right at the high speed left kilo, Romeo, spot number six, contact the ramp, and uh, we've let them know. Left turn, Romeo, kilo, we need EMTs at the gate. Roger. EMT. Any information that you have uh, that, that you can give us, uh, we'll pass it along. Appreciate it. We have a uh, pilot that had a seizure. A pilot that had a seizure? Yes. Ramp, American 755, going to Alpha 23. Interesting. The long international flights are the safest now due to extra pilots required to be on the flight deck during critical phases of flight. This extra pilot requirement does not currently exist for domestic flights and short international flights. However, having that la extra layer of safety will no matter what if this scenario happens again with the involuntary flight control inputs. Wow. No number of pilots on the flight deck will be able to respond in time. When do you think it's going to happen? Do you think we should have like an over-under on plane crashes? Not the, you know... I was thinking the long flights would be the more dangerous ones. Yeah, interesting. Do you think it's well? Let's wrap this up. Get into the plus thing. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. I mean, yeah, we could yeah. go all night. You know. Yeah, I'm going to talk know. about. I'm going to talk about the New Zealand data and that big controversy that's happening with Steve Kirsch and and the data and the guy got arrested. The whistleblower got arrested, and then fucking Kirsch got a bunch of cancellations, like big platforms, like can't like stuff that we don't even want to talk about because we use them too. So some scary shit like that. I don't even want to put it out there, but we got to talk about it. Bing, bing, bong. I got the New Zealand thing too. We're going to start with mine. All right. Deal. I guess yeah. GrammericaOutlaw.ca for that second half, you know, sign up for plus, get it, get it, get after it. Six bucks a month. If you want just the audio, you want to get after the video you can get that on um locals and rockfin i guess live only on locals you get it on substack too email to you so if you want videos if you want just the audio it's grandamericaoutlaw.ca and you get that the, the full roundups and the full interviews all that stuff uh yeah if you guys want to keep going let's keep going i'll start shutting down the streams while i start this clip which is, of course, exactly what you were talking about. But uh, I, I, I'm worried it's going to be the same clip, so I want to get mine in there first, just in case. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That'd be a good uh, fade out for the live people, so they can track it down if they want to. So far, I mean, I can't believe it. Touch wood. We haven't got any. We got more stuff taken off uh, YouTube today, but we haven't got any strikes for roundups yet. Yeah. Okay, so. What I did with the data was um, look at the top 10 um, batches that were had a high death count, a high mortality rate, and I put them on a chart, um, which you can see up there. So it's got a, a batch ID. So what I did was our internal batch ID, I counted the number of vaccinated within that batch, and then I found out who was dead. Wow, well, let's have a look. And so we then look at the percentage of the ratio. So do we know if these are all Pfizer, the top 10? Yes, they are. And this is Pfizer's batch number 